what are some off-season fixes that the Dolphins need to address going into next year? I mean, first for me has to be, and I know I normally do position by position, but the Dolphins have a horrible cap space situation. You have Byron Jones, you have Xavier Howard, you gave Armstead a big contract. Obviously, you got to figure out what you're doing with Gasecki. You gave Bradley Chubb a bag. You have to figure out what you're doing with Jeff Wilson. There is just so much looming with what Miami has to do with their pay uh, in terms of who they're paying. They, they, there's too, there's too big of a narrative to figure out who you're bringing in. What are you going to do for the future? There are just like, do you trade Byron Jones since he hasn't been available? Do you give Xavier Howard a pay cut even though you just gave him an extension? Do you trade him away? What do you you, you just gave Tyreek Hill a bag? You're going to have to give Waddle a bag in a year or two. Like Miami has truly and honestly screwed themselves in terms of what they're going to be able to do financially. Then you have to make a decision on what you're going to do at quarterback. Tua goes down on an average anywhere from four to eight games every year since he's been in the league. Hand, ankle, fracture, concussion, whatever, right? You have to, if you're going to keep Tua, you have to have a, sa a safety blanket. And we know that Teddy Bridgewater, he hasn't been able to stay healthy the last couple of seasons either since he left New Orleans. So you have to find somebody more consistent there. Skylar Thompson did what he could in that playoff game, but he had two turnovers. He had an under 50% completion percentage in that game as well. So like, do you go with Skylar Thompson as your number two? Probably not. So I would say they need to go after a veteran quarterback in terms of having somebody behind Tua. And if he falls, he's going to be able to um, pick the team up. And then defense. I mean, at the end of the day, the Dolphins, as even though they were middle of the pack in terms of pass rush and sacking the quarterback, they just they could not get it going whatsoever on the defensive side of the ball. They went on like a six game losing streak to close out the year, five game losing streak, whatever it was. They couldn't stop opposing offenses. They couldn't stop the run. It just it became kind of a repetitive reoccurrence week in and week out. Did Xavier and Howard have some good plays? Yeah, a couple. Did some safeties have some good plays? A couple. But nothing that's going to say, we need to stop. They went and go, got to stop. Did they do that in the playoffs when it mattered the most? Yes, they forced a lot of turnovers against Josh Allen. But when it comes to total defense, the Dolphins have a lot of places that they need to simply improve upon. Again, you're going to need depth at the corner position. If you trade Byron Jones, you're going to need some depth at the safety spot. You're going to need some better pass rushers that are going to be able to get to the quarterback when Chubb is not available or having an off day. I know that Wilkins has some good games here and again, but for the sake of the argument, you're just going to need depth. Second, third level guys are going to be able to get at the quarterback, pin your ears back and do something. Offensively, you have Tua when healthy, which is just a looming question mark. You have Hill. You have Waddle. If Wilson resigns, you have freaking Raheem Mostert. You have a talented, studded offense. And when Armstead is healthy, you have a good left tackle, which is pivotal in this league. But since Tua is left-handed, in this case, it would be a right tackle that you're going to need. But the Miami Dolphins have a whole lot to improve upon. They started off 8-3. and three. Mike McDaniels was looking like a genius. They find a way to turn it around. Miami's finally competitive. Now look what happens. You barely, barely get in the playoffs. Tua is still in concussion protocol from the last few articles that I've read over the last few weeks because he just is still struggling with whatever that protocol is. And you're, you're just tied down financially. So, for, again, for me, it's got to be figure out what you're doing with your cap space. Figure out what you're going to do with personnel there. Got to add some quarterback depth. And then defensively, you got to make a decision on what you're going to do with Byron Jones and figure out what you're going to do in terms of adding some player personnel at that second level or even at that, at that excuse me, at that first level within the pass rush and that linebacker, that first front seven. Let's make definitive decisions on what we're going to do there so that they can drop back into coverage if need be. But at the same time, if they need to go get the quarterback, they can do it as well. Yeah, but it's kind of weird when, when we look at the Dolphins because they got off to such a great start. And then they just completely faltered in the second half of the year. And obviously, you know, Tua going through his concussions, that didn't help. And it just sort of set the entire season on a tailspin, especially on the second half. Now, granted, they did make the playoffs, but I mean, battered and bruised going into that Bills wildcard game. That was an understatement. It's just it seemed that they were just battered at the worst position at that quarterback spot. Now, granted, they damn near won that game, but uh, who's to say? Had Tua been in that game, had he been healthy, maybe he could have led that team to an upset win over Buffalo. But when it comes to the offseason fixes this year, Kev, I think the one thing that we have to kind of consider with the Dolphins is that they still are a relatively young team. Across the board, you know, 
there are some veterans on this team, but I think that there's a lot of potential with this team over the next, I don't know, three to five years. I think it'd be safe to say. And, you know, I guess if I had to really kind of point to one area where I think there needs to be some improvement this offseason, and when I say improvements, this is something that I think that could be improved upon over the next couple of years or so, is I just think that the coaching decisions have to be a little bit refined here. Because, look, when it comes to Mike McDaniel, this was his first year as a head coach in the NFL. Obviously, he had some great success in San Francisco. He comes over to Miami. And there were points even throughout the games last year where sometimes you would get a camera angle where he's talking to some of the offensive player personnel. It could have even been Tua. There was one video I saw in particular where I think he's talking to Tua. And he said that he had screwed up and some sort of play call or some sort of decision that he was making in game. And look, when it comes to Mike McDaniel, Mike McDaniel is one of the youngest head coaches in NFL history. Mistakes are just going to come with the territory with somebody who's not even in their forties or fifties. So he's still learning. He's still going through that process of trying to become a better head coach. But I think the players know the situation at the, the head coaching spot with him, you know, being inexperienced. And I think that, you know, as a unit, they will improve as time goes on. And as Mike McDaniel gets more head coaching experience, I think those mistakes will kind of fall away by the wayside. They won't be as prevalent moving forward. And I think as a whole, I think the Dolphins, if they're able to improve their status at the quarterback spot going into next season, obviously we'll see what happens with Tua. We don't know what his status is going to be next year. But as far as I see it, I think the Dolphins will be a more competitive team than they were this year. The biggest thing is is that they're going to have to limit their injuries, and that's something that you just can't do in the NFL. You can mitigate it as best as possible, but it just seemed to me that some of the things that really hurt the Dolphins this year was more injury-related, and after a certain point, you're not going to be able to compete at a high level when injuries are just so prevalent. So, and it happened to be at the worst spot at the quarterback spot. So overall, you know, if I really had to point to one off season fix, um, it would maybe to improve their pass rush as well. See if they can try to get out of like that middle of the pack where they, maybe they could try to get around 50 sacks as a unit next year. But yeah, outside of that, I think it would mostly just be predicated to try to improve just the, the day-to-day play calling that we see from the dolphins as a unit. But overall, I think they're a, a pretty solid team moving forward. They're still relatively young, and I think they have some potential. They just have to kind of correct some of these mistakes that kind of come with the territory with younger players and with younger coaches uh, at the helm. So that's how I see it.